to Spencer Colgan's wallpaper. Today, we're hanging a pattern that will depend on straightness and 90 degree corners to look its best. But let me just show you the corner. And I encourage everybody who's dealing with a, uh, an older home, especially an older home, but in all cases you use one of these, to just go up and check your corners because it will affect how the paper pattern looks in the corners, perhaps even significantly. And so you want to be able to tell your customer, please expect this. I have found in my experience, whenever you let the customer know, it's not a problem. It's when they don't know, they seem to attribute the, the mismatch to the wallpaper hanger. So in order to be really professional, you have to anticipate complaints and um, problems that may arise as a result of the installation. So here we are in the corner. How does that look to you? Watch this. That's a lot of play. If we were only talking about that, it wouldn't be a problem. But we're talking about that. And we gotta go in different areas. Look at look at the differential here. Look at how look at how wide that is. So we know that this corner is really off, right? Look at that gap there. But we're going to do the same overhead, right? And that's our only corner issue because the rest of the room, we can hide the paper in here. You can see the reveal is thick down there. And as we get up, right? But it's not a, it's not a major issue. It's just that you have to anticipate the problem. That's all. Okay, so let's get hanging this, knowing that we are going to have to do our best in these corners. And we'll show you how to do that. Our wallpaper sheet is 20 and 7 eighths of an inch wide. To remember, I wrote it down here. But can you bring them in? I want them to see the curvature in this corner. Can you see through your screen this going in here? Can you see that? Maybe if we pull this camera back and they can see. I want the viewers to look at the straightness of that corner. You can see in the middle of your screen, it's going outward to your right. Now watch this. Now look in the middle of your screen. It's going to your left, right? Now believe me in person, it's far more magnified than that. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. We have to fill this corner with wallpaper. So we're looking for the point at which the wallpaper will need to go as far left as is necessary. So it might be far left here and just make it, but right here it's pushing out, so it's kind of crumpled up up here. Nevertheless, we need to fill the corner. So our first investigation will be which is the point at which the wallpaper will be required to go as far into the corner as necessary. And from that point, we will make a line 20 and 7 eighths, right to the right of the corner. Because that will tell us where the edge of the wallpaper will fall. Let me show you what I mean. So now, you trust me that the corner is wavy. And with my eye, it's obviously right here. Right here really goes in, it's very noticeable. So, in order to fill this corner properly, This is going to be our plumb line. 
because when we put the edge of a wallpaper here, it will fill the entire corner in its deepest recess. Of course we're going to lose a little pattern. But if we don't put the edge of the paper here, we're going to have a gap. Do you understand it? It's very simple. If you have a corner doing this, you need to find out where it's most off. And when you determine where it's most off, that is the point at which you draw your edge line. Because you can expect that if your wallpaper comes out to here, every recess, be it small or great, will be filled. Let's do it. Now, if you didn't understand any of that, Spencer, I don't understand. What do you mean? Have an objectively straight edge line, a template. Measure from each point of your wall out to the line. Give it a number of inches and a fraction. Twenty and a half, twenty and an eighth. Your wallpaper is twenty and seven eighths of an inch. So, if I'm on the line right here, I'm at 20 and 7 eighths. Okay? So my wallpaper will fit perfectly right here. But this is an outward part of the corner. It would be silly if I put my wallpaper here because it goes in over here. And I'll draw the arrow there. So we can expect at least an eighth of an inch of the wallpaper needing to be moved over to the left. Let's see. Oh my goodness, was I wrong. Come on close, let's, let's let them see the importance of doing this correctly. Look at where I am now. 21 and 1, 2, 3 eighths. Look at that. This is 21 and 3 eighths, while right here is 20 inches and 7 eighths. So, what does that mean? Here's my wallpaper, right here, look. This is where my, this is where my wallpaper ends. Okay, so unless I make a line over the point where it at least meets the corner in all places. See, that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to make the left edge of the wallpaper meet everywhere while this remains straight. It's very important that you don't say, the heck with it, I don't understand it. Let me just throw it into the corner because then you're going to lose a lot of pattern. We're looking to lose the least amount of pattern which gives us a one eighth of an inch overlap onto this wall. If you have any questions, just leave a question in the video. I'm explaining this for the do-it-yourselfer who's never done it before. Theoretically, you could take your, your, your tape measure and do it like this, look. Wow, okay, about 21 and a quarter. Check it out, let, let them see how that line moves on our tape measure. Wow, look at this. I'm at 21 and a half. Look at that. So the wall, the corner is moving. Look at that. Look at this. I'm at 21 inches here. Go down. Look at that lace line. Can you see that through your camera? Look at that. 21 and a 
one and a half. Oh my goodness, we're almost at 21 and 5 sixteenths here. Okay, it looks like it evens off at 21 and 5 sixteenths, folks. Okay. Oh, is it fair enough to say that? Yes. Okay, so my, my, my widest point is 21 and 5 sixteenths. Now we're back to 21. Wow. Look, can they see where I am now? Can you come behind me and under my arm? Can they see that? Mm -hmm. We are looking at a full one inch differential. Because right now I'm at 20 and 5 sixteenths. Distance between the corner and my objectively straight, unchanging edge line. Okay, so we have our reference. <clears throat> the greatest point is 21 and 5 sixteenths. Now, <clears throat> that's how far it comes out. Now we want to know how far does it go in? because that's what's going to be important. And we already know that it's an inch from 21 to 5 sixteenths. It's, tw it's 20 and 5 sixteenths. So, what's 20 and 5 sixteenths plus 1 eighth? Because the eighth is what we have to add to get into this corner. That's our equation. Okay? So, there you have it. You understand what I'm doing here? We know our furthest point, and we know our most inward point. Take an account of this. Let's say that's our corner. We've measured how far this point is to this line here, and we've also measured our furthest point inward to our line here. This inward one is the one with which we have to concern ourselves. The most inward one, our most furthest point is 21 and 5 sixteenths. And then we have to add an eighth of an inch so that the corner wraps around onto this wall. And we have to be from our laser. So we're going to be losing an inch of pattern. Nothing we can do about it. Okay, let's get to it. So we have our first sheet up. Remember, it's 20 and 7 eighths of an inch wide. So... In case I confused you, you can see the wallpaper in the corner at the bottom. There's very little overlap onto that wall, right? But look at the situation as we go up. Watch this. You see the bottom. There isn't much overlap. Now watch what happens when we go up the wall. Look at how the wallpaper flares out. You can see that it gets thicker at the top. Look at that. So if you knew nothing about the inches and the fractions, you don't really have to. Put your wallpaper on the wall and see what happens when you put the paper one eighth of an inch overlapped onto the adjacent wall, keeping a plumb line on the right, whether you do it with a spirit level, a plumb line, or a laser line. 
you will automatically discover all of this mathematics without having to do it. You see that? You have a, an eighth of an inch. In this case, it's about three sixteenths at the bottom there. And necessarily, as you go up, since the corner's off, your wallpaper's off. You just keep it straight. And the wallpaper will dictate what has to get cut off and trimmed in that crooked corner. It's really that simple. But if you wanted to do the measurements, you take your tape measure and you ride it along the crooked corner and you could keep your pencil over at the 21 inch mark, holding it together with your tape measure as you use both hands to slide the tape measure up and down. And you can simply draw a line as you move your tape measure and you'll see that it looks like an EKG machine. Your pencil will draw a line on the right edge according to the crooked corner. There's so many ways to do it. And you'll come up with the conclusion, in order to fill this corner, I have to start my laser line or my plumb line or my spirit level line at this particular point. Okay, but I give you the mathematics so that you understand it really is a function of measurement. That's all. That's the only reason I do it. But you really don't have to know it. It's simply a visual. You could figure it out visually. Okay, let's get back to the video. The adjoining piece on the adjacent wall being a little over an inch off. I can continue this pattern onto here at the top. So if you look under this sheet, you'll see the pattern underneath it. But as we come down, because our wall is doing this, we yield to plumb. And so, although at the top our pattern matches in the corner, because we're so off in that corner, the plumb line dictates how the pattern will look. So down here, you'll see, keep this in memory, you'll see that we're off. And if we match the corner, theoretically we could do that, but our, our edge now would be like this. It would go crooked. Because if we don't have straight, then our straight will yield to being crooked. And everybody would notice that if you tried to keep that pattern in the corner. They'd say, this, this pattern on this wall is crooked. Well, the answer would be, well, we try to keep the pattern in the corner and throw off our line. And therefore, common sense dictates that you wouldn't do that. Okay, the primary consideration being plumbness. We have a pattern here. And if you notice, there is a horizontal repeat. You see this one here, and you see this one here. They have to be straight. And the only way to do that is to let the leading edge here 
govern the plum, which means if your corner is significantly off, if it's only a little off, this, what I'm talking about, doesn't apply. But if your corner is significantly off, and as you know, it's a little more than an inch off, as I demonstrated earlier in the video, then our corner must absorb the error. Now, if you look at the top, it's a pretty good match, right? But as you come down, starting at about right here, now my corner is cut, obviously. As you come down, you might notice that the pattern doesn't match perfectly. But I ask you to consider how it looks far away. How's it look? You see how good it looks. The pattern is friendly to the situation in the corner, fortunately for the homeowner. But sometimes you'll have a pattern that's not so forgiving.